wish I'd gone ahead and done what everyone told me to do and become the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I had to go do a PhD. Welcome back to the Firebrand Podcast, friends. I'm Maggie Ulmer, and I'm here with... Mm, David Watson. And Scott Kisker. And... Tasha Mallory. Thanks for being with us today, Tasha. Thank you for inviting me. And we want to welcome Scott to the podcast, too. Welcome uh, is back, this your first Scott. time? <laughs> Scott. Well, I mean, it's the first time that you have scheduled a podcast at a time that I have been geographically present. <laughs> Tells you all you need to know about so, Scott Kisker right there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lives and dies by the Google Calendar. No cell phone. <laughs> you know, I, 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 am my, I am my own man or I'm the Google Calendar's man. Something like that. Something like that. Well, uh, we have a lot of fun things to talk about today. But before we dive into any of that, David, you have an important announcement for our listeners. So, Yes. Um, the Global Methodist Church, like many other denominations, is collecting money for hurricane victims, in particular North Carolina. And if you want to contribute to help, you can go to globalmethodist.org forward slash give and be sure to designate your gift for hurricane relief. So it's, once again, globalmethodist.org forward slash give and then be sure to designate your gift um, and to the folks in North Carolina you know our, our hearts go out to you we're mm -hmm. praying for you um, we know there's a lot of suffering there and so folks if you can give to help these people out that would be really uh, good thank you yeah all right well thank you for that sure yeah all right well I don't know. Do we have something to talk about? Did something? Did anything happen this week? Possibly. I'd have to look back at my Google Calendar to find out. <laughs> we um, we did have a convening conference of the Global Methodist Church, and that was fun times. Woohoo! Yes, that happened. Yes. So I was in Costa Rica. David was in Costa Rica, and Tisha Mallory was in Costa Rica. Scott was not in Costa. Rica. He didn't have it I on was his in calendar. Dayton. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> He was obvious. with us in spirit. I went on a retreat. Did you? On the 18th, 19th, and 20th. Good yes. for you. Did you do that on purpose? How do you accidentally go on retreat? <laughs> I know I'm saying, did you go on retreat during general conference on purpose? Um, actually, the retreat was for me to plan all the sermon series for 2025. That's, so it was a working retreat. Yeah, it was a working I was retreat. like, that doesn't sound like a but retreat. But I did pray. I did. I. I was at least mindful that you were practicing the, mindfulness. The uh, holding space for us. I was holding space. <laughs> we're using an app. <laughs> for Jeez, Louise. The general conference. So I was aware that it was going on while I was on retreat, thinking about other things, but about Jesus. I was thinking about Jesus, and I was thinking about the Bible. Well. As it so happens, yes. we were thinking about Jesus at the general conference. <laughs> and Hot dog, yes, we were. Woo! And the, the general conference, I never thought I'd say these words. The general conference was awesome. It was awesome. It was I've never even phenomenal. come close to say those words before. But the general conference And was, I was at was the awesome. 2019 general conference, and it, that would have never occurred to me. <laughs> to say it was awesome? To say it was awesome. I mean, no. unless you think of awe as fearful. It was not awesome. I'm um, going to keep all the words I have in my head. But it was it was joyful. There was a spirit of unity and cooperation. Yeah. Uh, the worship was was amazing. Um, it was worshipful. It was worshipful <laughs> worship. To the triune God from the very beginning, like the very opening, we opened yes. with the creed. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And who uh, was responsible for that, Tisha? Not me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the team, but I, I had some influence, but uh -huh. Sterling Allen. <laughs> and it was, um, it was, it was just, it was what, it was better than I ever thought that kind of meeting could be. Yeah. Like. I mean, 
your bar was pretty low. I'm going to I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> but even going in with low expectations, it was it was truly worshipful. It was a, an actual sacred event. Yeah, it was. It was. And and people were willing to say, you know, like, okay, well that's not exactly how I wanted it, but okay, you know, I can live with this for the sake of the body, for the unity. This is what the body has decided. Yeah. And there wasn't a whole lot of like parliamentary sleight of hand or anything no. like, you know, like it wasn't like that. It wasn't hyper political. And, and if we can keep that, we really will have something special. Yeah. I think going forward. Yeah. I thought it, what I loved is that I feel like I knew who, who we were worshiping. Yeah. Like yes. Our worship was all going in the same direction. Yeah, and, um, that helps. Yes, from from the beginning. And I a lot of people have said this, but I felt like I was at, I just felt like I was at home. Yeah. I felt like I was at where, the place I work at, United. I felt like I was at my church. I, f- I just felt like, wow, this feels like a normal Tuesday for me with the movement of the Spirit and just us being open to what God wants to do in a certain place. And I know that, maybe not all churches are like that but i just felt like wow this i can just be who god made me to be in worship the way that god created me to worship and lead others in that way as well so it was very comfortable for me from the very beginning to just yeah do what god called me to do yeah i don't think i've ever experienced um unity in christ like that i mean i that sounds a little strange to say but i that was the thing more than anything else, I thought, wow, unity in Christ really is a sign and wonder. Because even in the moments where there were people who were saying, you know, that's, I don't agree, there was still a lot of honor. Because, not because, I mean, look, there were a lot of accomplished people in the room. And, but I, my sense, I could be, you know, being overly romantic about it. But my sense was that the honor was coming from a place of wanting to preserve unity, wanting to actually preserve a sense of Christian love, not just to say, you've got letters behind your name, you know, so I should be nice to you. Yeah. It was like holiness. Yeah, it was holiness. holiness. Like this is holiness on display. And our desire is to spread scriptural holiness. In fact, that's our mission. Absolutely. Segway. I just handed that right off to you, David. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I will say, of of all the legislation, I was I was like, okay, well, we'll see if that one passes. Yeah. (laughs) Me too. And it it was like the very last item of business. And we actually had to extend time to get to it. And I just, I kept thinking, we're going to run out of time. But even, just, let's just pause here for a second, because in previous general conferences, they would run the clock down intentionally right. to avoid pieces of legislation where there was, you know, whatever, political maneuvering. But they extended the time. Yeah, they did. I was really grateful for that. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. So... I, I, I don't really have anything negative to say. Yeah. I um, am grateful for all the delegates, but also the volunteers who were there, the prayer team they worked that was so, there, the everyone pages, worked so hard. Right, the music team. Yeah, the music team was all volunteer, like everyone. Like we weren't getting paid to go. We weren't getting paid to be there. Like it really was a, an act of love and desire to make this, you know, a holy space and uh, good well you guys were phenomenal and that orchestra was something else they were so good there was a and a choir too yeah a choir yeah. yes I mean, everyone was amazing yeah so it was good and and i and the bishops who presided did a good job they were yes, very they fair did. they kept things in order and um it was good it was good they kept there from being too many moments of personal privilege and so what I, is a moment of personal privilege again when you rise to say i would like to take a moment of personal privilege and then you say whatever you want yeah <sighs> bishop i want to take a moment of personal privilege my moment of personal privilege is to refuse you from taking a moment of personal privilege well no yeah that happens <laughs> but it was fair yeah yeah um i just want to let everyone know in the conference I really love Star Wars. Thank you. <laughs> That's my moment of personal yeah. privilege. 
<laughs> I don't know the reference, but it no, sounds it's just strange. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what they can be like sometimes. Yeah. It's but really they, anything. They, I would actually, I would say that I appreciated the. There were. I think I was only present for. I witnessed maybe two moments of personal privilege, and I appreciated both of them. Rich Jones had a really important one. Yes, he yes. did. That when, was the was, one in particular. Thank yeah. you, Rich. Thank you. <laughs> when when he said essentially. If someone disagrees with you, it's not because they aren't hearing the Holy Spirit. Yeah, let's be careful mm-hmm. about how yeah. we mm. throw that around. Yeah, yeah absolutely. and that was good. That was that was an appropriate use of a moment of personal privilege. It was appropriate in that moment, too, yeah, I felt. Yeah, as a moment. Yeah. In the moment. Timely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was timely. That's the word, timely. So, yeah, I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, so I think what I appreciated the most, of, I mean, it was wonderful, but I loved how the the moment when the Holy Spirit, like, fell mm-hmm. really organically was during Eucharist. Yeah. And I, I started fangirling so much. I'm like, Jesus is in the room. The Holy Spirit is here. Like, people are just on their faces. And so I just was like, yes, Jesus is present with us. It, I just, I loved it. It was so great. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yes. Yeah, there were some really powerful, spontaneous yeah. moments of I repentance. Like, and... I don't remember what year it was, but it's like 1802 or whatever. <laughs> it was a Baltimore uh, annual conference or general conference where 600 people were slain in the spirit in one blow, basically. Like this is like where general conference was also a revival meeting. Yeah, yes. we can get there, people. Let's let's be aspirational I here. I think there were certainly elements of that yeah. at mm-hmm. this conference. You know, the 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 worship was revivalistic and 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 not in a contrived way no. either. It was it was spontaneously so. You know, mm-hmm. you didn't have to say, everybody now come up to the altar and kneel down. It wasn't like that. It was just people just came. They knelt and, and they prayed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, too. I mean, f- just I say this for the sake of people who weren't there. It wasn't about music styles either. It wasn't about contemporary versus, quote unquote, traditional. It was just everything was an offering. Yeah. Yes. The worship wars are outdated. Just want to say that. For the record, we're not going to fight about it anymore. Amen. I'm with you on that. <laughs> I'm still like, everybody just stop. It's fine. We can do, you know, Great Are You, Lord, and a Wesley hymn back to back, and it's okay. Amen. <laughs> Tesha has spoken. Yes, we're done. Right down the wall. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm with it. I'm down for that. It's fine with me. Yeah. Um, I, never, I never found those worship wars very interesting anyway. Well, no, because they're ultimately just about individual preference. Right. I, I grew up in the middle of... It, yeah. In my home church, it was like embroiled in it. We had to have meetings, meetings. where we listened to each other, and like mm-hmm. people were like, "You hate God because yeah. you want drums." Uh, you, that's and blah, harsh. Blah, blah, blah. You hate God. Somebody, Dude. somebody <laughs> yeah. told me I was fifteen. Somebody said you can leave, and I was like, "Wow, you're telling a fifteen-year-old girl who has a calling to ministry that yeah. you want me to leave?" You know, but that's how that's how passionate people are. We're not there anymore. Work it out with Jesus. There you go. That was in a previous denomination, but worship wars. Yeah. Yeah, but they but they they were kind of cross denominational though. I mean, the worship wars were That's true. Yeah. 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 Well, all you right. Remember that show, you remember that show Whale Wars? <laughs> oh yeah, that was always that was like hardcore yeah. Friday night primetime TV watching for me. Not wow. really. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a thing? Yeah, it used to be a show. There were these people that, Never would, heard of it. that would go and they would intercept whaling boats in yeah. their boat. And they would do things like spray them with water and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And like a water cannon? They would just harass them. So they right? wouldn't get the whales. So okay. I, just, I just think it's funny. You just said they would spray them with water. And I immediately thought of the way you spray cats with water. <laughs> and it was about that effective. <laughs> because... Because uh, the Whale Wars team was not super, like, they were not hyper-competent. And so oh it, was, it was just always, like, one disaster after another. These poor people are out there trying to save whales, and they just c- couldn't get it done. I felt pretty bad. For, anyway, let's not. Does this guy know how to party or what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yo, come over and we'll drink root beer and watch Let's Whale Wars. Wars. I mean, if you had been here earlier, you could have heard him talk about what an awesome hiker he is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he is. I believe I, yeah. I am a good hiker. I do like to hike. I hike consistently You're willing to go with this, Tesha? 
I'm I'm staying in the middle. I don't know. She's Switzerland. <laughs> I'm She's Switzerland. Switzerland no, because she like... knows I like to hike. <laughs> sure. Okay. When have you I been also, hiking with look, David? I also know that he likes the song God of Wonders, and we're not even going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> and they played God of Wonders at General Conference. They played God of... You, know. you win, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Worship Wars officially yeah, over. They're, no, but they're go, going on five brand right now. What, Worship Wars. What, I, I, what happened was... <laughs> what happened was... People see, have no idea this happened. What happened was... <laughs> so Look, I'm, I dragged your butt up and down a mountain in Colorado one day. So... Okay. I had a good time hiking Did in Colorado. You? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. I grew up hiking. As the queen said, memories vary. <laughs> <laughs> memories vary. Well, back to yes. anything else. Yes. But um we did sing God of Wonders, though. Yeah. And I and I saw Tesh's face when it started up. You know that guitar yeah. part and and she was like, "What's happening?" <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. It is a whole story. We probably should not go into it on this podcast. Okay. <laughs> we can save that for post-podcast I don't know why Tessa hates the song God of Wonders. Because Are it, you talking about God because, of Wonders? Because, because beyond, beyond our, our galaxy. It's the divinity. Yeah. Whenever you sing holy, you have That's to, my thing. No, it's true. You have to do it three times. I agree. Because it's there's three members of the Trinity. It's only twice. But the number of times they say holy in the song <laughs> is divisible by three. <laughs> is it? Have you, you done the do math? That math. Yes, I don't believe I just you. did it in my head <laughs> I don't believe just now. You. But the thing is, so we're like totally off topic. And it's, oh, my like, gosh. It's always so easy to just, like, the song would be just as good as God of Wonder, Beyond Our, wherever. Galaxy. It would be just as bad and just as good. You are holy, holy, holy. Right. Like, there's no reason to just skip I either the Son or the Holy Spirit. I don't, I don't know which one. I don't think the people who are writing the song were thinking about that. The Trisagion? Yes. Maybe they're Aryans. Okay. The Sanctus. They were not thinking about the Sanctus. And this is why. <laughs> they should come to United. Tesha is who she is. To the Certificate in Worship Leadership Program that's launching very soon. <laughs> yes, I that's true. In the sp- I summer? For you. It's going to be opening the registration like... This week. Okay. But back to general conversation. Right. And they will teach you how to play and sing God of Wonders. <laughs> Correctly. It's officially in the curriculum. Scott's going to do it the God, right way. That's right. God is beyond our galaxy. <laughs> Listen, I'm traumatized from like early 90s praise music. <laughs> Me too. I want to move on. <laughs> Let's all sing Days of Elijah now. No. <laughs> oh. There's no God like Jehovah. That gets really into it, man. Yeah. I've seen some seen some charismatics get really into that. I the know. flags, it's it just all, comes out. There's no God, God like Jehovah. Jehovah. It's like they have one in I, their back pocket. I know. Like, ready? A hundred percent true. I carry a flag. It's like, I carry a portable flag. It's like break this. In case someone plays. Flag capsule in case uh, of no days like this. God of <laughs> or Days of Elijah. Days of Elijah. Right. The thing yeah. that freaks me out about Days of Elijah is how weird and chanty it gets. And then you're just like, I'm in a cult. This is what, I'm in a weird. You're like. Cult. Why is everyone wearing white? Yeah. Oh my gosh, why do we have white flags? Why, why are we all stomping our feet? Why does everybody sound like they're about to like... I just am like, I want to go now. I want to leave. Wow, I, that got dark. I, I've never had that <laughs> oh, thought. I you, just sang the song and enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you, you, know? need, you need to be out in some rural churches with the Pentecostal, like... Mm-hmm, yeah. Fine, I would love to do that, actually. Yes. And take his tambourine. Behold, he comes. <laughs> and then right and after that, the clouds. snake handling happens. I'd love to see that, actually. I think it'd be cool to see it. Maybe not participate. I was in it. I think anyway. I would do it. I didn't attend, but anyway, back to general conference. Yes, please. Woo! Sorry, listeners. Um, one thing that I really also loved about general conference was the the sense of the globalness of the gathering. Now, I, there's more to, you know, there are even more people, I think, will come and join and all of that. But I loved worshiping with the Costa Rican Methodist Church. I loved getting to yeah, hear from cool. mm-hmm, Bishop Palomo and um, meet some of the leaders of that church uh, with the work with Spirit and Truth. Mm-hmm. And then just um, there was an evening of combined worship where people from all over 
Costa Rica, members of the Costa Rican Methodist Church came and worshiped with the General Conference of the Global Methodist Church. And there was this moment in worship. It was so sweet. It was really beautiful. Just the spirit was so sweet. A worship team from the Costa Rican Methodist Church traveled eight hours to come and do a short set at the beginning. And they sang a cappella, although the organist, who is that? Stephen Goldsmith. Jumped on the amazing. organ and was playing with them. And I just want to, like, the spirit was so We could present. have done that the rest of the time. A hundred percent, yes. Like, so happy. <laughs> yes. But it was, there was this moment where we were singing, half the room singing in Spanish, half the room singing in English. It's the same song. Mm. It's like that, how you were saying, Tesha, just worship all in one direction. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful. Mm. Yeah. I loved that. It's eschatological. That. Yes, it was a glimpse which of is the what, eschaton. Which is what Are we going to talk about God of Wonders is. again? No, <laughs> yes. we're talking about that <laughs> going to church on Sunday is a sacramental yeah. act mm -hmm. that foretastes actually the gathering of the believers to Christ at the final celebration slash judgment. And I mean, that's why we are have, from the four corners of the world, we are all coming to the throne of Jesus. And that's why I have Eucharist every Sunday. Just putting that out there. Every Sunday. We every don't Sunday. in my church, so. But I'm shaming you. I'm joking. I, I'm not, that's all right. <laughs> I'm not I'll, I'll get over it. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are funny. And I loved when um, we got that plaque from yeah. the Evangelical Methodist Church of Costa Rica. I lost it just when they were reading it, the commemorative plaque. You know, a church that desires to be holy as he is holy. Yeah. It was, was so beautiful. beautiful. I just, I, mm. I thought it was. I like know. Bishop Palomo. He's he's a good, good man. Yeah, he is. Good so leader. So we got to, um, so Spirit and Truth was invited to uh, go to the General Conference and do some, to yeah. participate in the evangelism. Tell us about that, Maggie. Well, there was some, there were missions teams and evangelism teams. We were helping to do some equipping and leading with the evangelism side of things. And so we went to two different Costa Rican churches and um, did what we do, you know, with a translator. Say more. <laughs> well, uh, we do we do some equipping around the idea of just evangelism as a normal part of the Christian life. And so um, Matt did a great job. Matt Reynolds did a great job sort of doing some teaching around that. And then we gave a very practical workshop, which we always give when we go to churches, about how to um, listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit, um, discern, you know, when it is a, an appropriate moment to approach someone, and then just offer to pray. And then Americans and uh, Costa Ricans were paired up, and they went out, and they did street evangelism together, and it was awesome. Yeah. It was really, awesome. That's great. Yeah. It, was. it was. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, I, I think it's great, you know, I, it's great that you had the, the groups paired up and that everybody yeah. was trying to witness uh, you know, local and far, furners uh, trying to yeah. witness to Jesus. It yeah. was, what There's was, something, and you know, people from, I mean, because there are people from all over the world there who yeah. would have been participating in that. I mean, it's sort of, yeah, I for mean, those who, res you know, were uh, on the receiving end of the gospel, that would just be visually quite dramatic. Yeah, I think so. Rando I mean, <laughs> people from all over the world coming into your streets in Costa Rica praying for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love, I mean, I'm, I'm going to speak in generalities now. I mean, a lot of Latin American cultures are a lot more it, um, communal in the sense that it's a lot easier to just approach people. Unlike, you know, in the United States, sometimes you kind of have to like, Explain up front why you're talking to them. I'm not trying to be weird, okay? Yes, 100%. <laughs> I almost always lead with, this might be a little strange, but I'm not a weirdo, which... Uh, we all are. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. my husband. I'd like to take a moment of yeah. personal privilege <laughs> to talk about why Maggie is, in fact, a weirdo. Oh, no. No. <laughs> it you will take not. too long. But um, but it was, it was really beautiful, and... Um, uh, 
in the first church where we were there typically when we do these outreaches stateside you know we people go out and they go to commercial areas places where there are businesses but the first church we were in was not like that it, we were in a neighborhood hmm. and our, she went door to door for reals wow cool. and it was totally fine yeah it was like no big deal at all well it actually isn't a big deal here either you can go door to door. Jehovah's I mean, Witnesses do it. Yeah, Mormons do it. I, That's true. I I do it sometimes, sure. or at least rando. You know, people who are in the neighborhood of the church that I serve, I'll I'll just show up to people's houses. I don't care. I show up. I knock on their door. I ask for a moment of personal privilege <laughs> <laughs> to tell them about Jesus. Well, there was a really so so not every group had a translator, and not every group had someone who spoke English or. Spanish. So, um, well, I mean, every group I mean, had someone who spoke English and Spanish, but not everyone who had people who understood. So not every group had, what? Not, not a every, translator. Translator. Not everybody had someone who could translate both ways. I or, should have gone. My Spanish is impeccable. Yeah, it, it is. is so amazing. Yeah. yeah. So w- that was really fascinating. So one of the things that was, I think, great was that – the Costa Ricans were clearly leading these Good. these groups and because they're the primary language speakers. And so that was, I think, a really interesting experience for a lot of the Americans present, you know, because sometimes we can be a little... No. A little bossy. Americans? <laughs> yeah. Huh. But, I don't believe that about you at all, Maggie. <laughs> I mean, I, you know... She's a boss lady. I, I was... Plenty happy to take a back seat, you know. I mean, I love mm-hmm. that. But the um, there was a beautiful moment where a group knocked on someone's door. When the woman who answered the door realized what was happening, she literally pulled this whole group in. She was like, oh, yeah, come in. She's like, because my son has been dealing with symptoms of asthma for four days. So you pray for him. Mm-hmm. And so what was really cool is that later in the week – at the conference center in Costa Rica, we bumped into the pastor of that church, and he said, I have a testimony. And he showed me a picture. He showed our team a picture of the um, the mom and the son, and he was telling me in broken Spanish, he's different. He's better now. Hmm. So we just praise God for that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, this is like, that's a total, I mean, she would have thought, okay, this is the Holy Spirit. I don't know what to do with my son. People show up on them. They want to pray for healing. This is God. This yeah. is God. Come in. <laughs> yes. Please come in. Pray for my son. I, even if, you know, whatever. And yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I bet they're Methodist now. <laughs> I know. Well, that was the other thing that was really wonderful is that at every single, every single person that got prayed Not for that whatever. that matters. Well, but. I mean, but it should matter, right? Like. We do a lot around sort of just evangelizing and saying, okay, talk to people, tell them about God, but also like, hey, connect them back to the house, you know what I mean, to the home. Um, So anyway, it was just really beautiful. And she was like, where, where are you guys from? And so it was great because the pastor was right there, could Mm -hmm. connect them. Mm -hmm. And anyway. Well, we pray that that work would continue. Amen. That's right. And that young man. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Good work. Good well, job. Glad y'all were there. I mean, God saved his life. He's probably got a call to oh, something anyway. There you go. Speak that was it, really fun. Scott. Speak it. I, I like the idea that along with the general conference is like wherever we go, there's going to be an evangelistic mission alongside that. Amen. I think that's a good idea. I hope that continues in future yeah. general conferences there was also really awesome work done through the mission side there i know that there was an orphanage that was being worked on and people spend a lot of time just devoting their time to to supporting that and it was just it, the whole thing was really jesus-y and beautiful nice i loved all of it mm. that's good it was good that's good good work it's good when the church gets together and it ends up being Jesus-y. Yeah. <laughs> the church like acts like the church. Yeah. It's so rad. Yeah, so so I think, you know, it was a really it was it was a tiring experience. I know Tesha, you didn't get much sleep the whole time you were there. Because... Yeah, it was like the most exhausting thing that I've ever been a part of. But <laughs> it was like five AM to ten PM kind of every day. You guys went hard. Mm-hmm. 
but it was like you know when you empty yourself completely Mm -hmm. I just and it was so worth it though you know like giving everything so beautiful I'd do it again maybe I need a nap first but I would do it again (laughs) (laughs) like how long of a nap like year or so potentially yeah Yeah. we'll just see when I wake up (laughs) I mean the delegates were probably doing 12 to 14 hour days Mm -hmm, every day but um but then we were getting a lot more sleep than the music team and, and the pages and other mm-hmm. people like that who, who weren't uh, getting much time off. And I'm sure the bishops were exhausted as well. But it was, you know, even though it was tiring, it was like you got the feeling that it was good work that yeah, you were doing. Absolutely. And so you were willing to exert extra effort. Um, so it was good. Yeah, I, and I think, you know, they, they said the, the next, so so we did have a, you know, we did have, still have a problem with getting visas. Hmm. Keith, Keith Boyette did a good job of explaining uh, in a meeting I was in that a lot of African countries are not part of something, I think it's called the Hague Convention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and if, you, if a country is part of the Hague Convention, then it's pretty easy to get a visa into another country that's associated with it but for africans it's much harder and so we're going to have the next conference in africa in 2026 central africa we we haven't identified a place yet where we're going to have it but we're going to go to central africa we're going to have the conference there because because so that all our african delegates get delegates can be there now for those delegates who weren't there we did use Zoom. They did have voice. They did vote. Mm-hmm. And so they, were, they weren't able to participate in the same way they would have had they been there, but it was better than their not being there at all. Yeah. And so the virtual participation was important. I'm really glad we did that. But could I assume some African delegates could get to Costa Rica. That's right. Yeah, yeah they, they did. did. A lot of them did, actually, mm-hmm. but, but some of them didn't. And for those who didn't, we we made accommodations for online participation. Yeah, it was good. So yeah, um, so we'll be going to Central Africa sometime in uh, 26, and that should be a very rich experience, I think, yeah. So, so what's next? For the Global Methodist Church, I think a lot of it is just gonna be now operationalizing what was put in place by the general conference. Mm. Um, we got we elected six new bishops, every single one of them, in my opinion, an excellent choice. Yeah. Um, we spent a lot of time figuring out how we were going to vote on these folks. <laughs> There is that was that was an area where there was disagreement, but at the end of the day, I think it worked out really Did well. Did anyone suggest my vision of just putting everyone who is a delegate is a candidate for bishop because they're already general overseers, and then we have the smallest child come up and draw a name out of the? Yeah, out of the that's it. that actually that's what happened. <laughs> that's how the cops choose their uh, pope. I think that's a great idea. There was well, a, there was there were children there. It could yeah, have yeah, it could, could have happened. Have, we could have just <laughs> had the youngest may. child come in and just draw names out of a hat, and we'll see what God does. That's how Matthias was chosen. <gasps> you know, um, we didn't go that direction. <laughs> I'm this sweating time, <laughs> this time. <laughs> well, um, you, you, that's just because you want to be in control. <laughs> no, I, I mean I could not have been more, less in control than what I was. But I mean. There, yeah, there were the there were several pr- proposals Sounds on the table crazy. for how to do this, but my my concern was that we not have major disagreement in the body yeah. about how to do it. And the good thing was almost all of the votes were really lopsided one yes. way or the other. Yeah, that's and right. And so there, what that showed was that there was a lot of agreement mm-hmm. in the body about how we should move forward. And so I just wanted the conference to make a decision about how we cho- chose bishops so that we could go ahead and do that. And, and we, we chose six excellent bishops to serve alongside the ones we have now who are also very good. And um, so we've got now to operationalize. The TLC is gonna be phasing out as of, I think we're kind of 
doing a handoff over let me turn that off now on my computer i think we are making a handoff and what speak and into the mic will be completely finished hopefully by january and we are not um going to meet on a regular basis but the connectional council and the chief operating officer will kind of take over from where we left off and i think that that's that's the way to do it the connectional council was voted on by the body i can't remember who all was voted on to it but um but i'm glad now that we have um, governance in the church that was voted on by the general conference approved by the general conference and so I think that group the connectional council will be key to operationalizing what's gone forward we also have several commissions that were set up and uh, like the commission I love a good commission the commission, for example, <laughs> on, we don't mean commission of a crime or something, Maggie. But, Sometimes that's a result of commissions. Yeah. But, yeah. Christmas morning for Maggie. Um, commissions! And bishops, I think, head those commissions up, and mm -hmm. so the bishops are going to have to get on the stick and get these commissions working. So, Yeah, it's my hope, um, and I should probably talk to some people about this, but I would love to bring legislation to the 26th general conference about a book of worship we've been we've been kind of working on it but then we discerned that it should be the will of the body not a few select people who think they're in charge i did have a lot of say in like the communion liturgy and different liturgies that we've used in the denomination so far but i'm really excited about a potential like book of common worship um we're talking about doing daily prayers you know that is like a daily so this, office yeah, or? daily office so this is cool. a, a useful resource for the church that will that be, be used great. in people's daily lives yeah awesome yeah. So sauce we whoever's listening we need to get on that so <laughs> but, <laughs> contact I mean, me but, but is that something that could be implemented by the connectional council or one of the commissions and then ratified so by the 26th conference because or not yeah. because mm -hmm. um you don't want to wait six more years, right? Because right. after 26, there's not going to be another conference until 2032. Yeah, absolutely. We also talked about, you know, use, having interim liturgies and things like that. Mm -hmm. Because it, I mean, I write liturgies all the time, but it does take a while to write one that's for an entire denomination. You have to use it over a long period of time. There's be a lot of input. So, yes, David. Just make it happen. Somebody make it happen. I'll help. I'll volunteer. Okay. <laughs> we will try to figure out where that should be initiated. Yeah. In I think in discipleship. Yeah. But we can. It's fine. I love you, Tesha. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Tesha, this is like. She and, hadn't given a th any thought any to this. Any thought to it whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe She's we just should. like, look, I don't really have opinions except here are my opinions. <laughs> also, I'm really right. And... <laughs> I'm sorry. She's not wrong. No, you're not wrong. I love I you. That, that was my great. first question to David when he came back. So what what are we supposed to do on a Sunday morning? Well, we have a communion liturgy in O4, Our Heart to Praise My God. So you can use that. And I know it's hard because, like, we weren't fighting over liturgy, right? Yeah. And I love the, the liturgy of the former denomination. But we have to start using new resources. So I Scott, you have to memorize a new I liturgy. I have to memorize something else. I can help you. Okay. <laughs> We should do a track that people can listen to. to or just... you could just, like, read it out of a book. That's right. You can read. Do you know how to read? <laughs> I've done it once or twice. Um, I just, I think, as a side note, one of the things that I find highly amusing is the way that we refer to the previous denomination, sort of like the way that we don't say Voldemort's name. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, Maggie. That's kind of what it's like. Well, it's because we don't, I mean, I, if, for me, that, fo the, all those arguments yeah, are they're over. Done. They're yes, over. Absolutely. And I don't want to revisit them again. Absolutely. I don't want to say anything bad about the UMC. Right. Right. And it's yeah. also like, like Jeff, Jeff Greenway said, you know, we definitely had our differences that participated that precipitated the division, but not everything about our previous denomination was bad either. No, I mean, there were some really good things, including the you know the liturgy that mm -hmm. you're talking about. And so I think that's why people kind of use these circumlocutions when yeah. when talking about it. But I think I you know 
I want to bless them yeah, to absolutely to pursue the Lord in the way they want to do that, and I want to do it in the way that we're doing it. You know, Amen in to the that. GMC. And so. Amen to that. So that was just a little joke. We're not, you know. There's no God like Jehovah. Sorry. There's no God like Jehovah. <laughs> Bringing the tension a little bit. Beyond our galaxy. <laughs> Wow. I don't think we need a mashup of those <laughs> yeah, two songs. We do. If you did a mash <laughs> look if you had a mashup of those and then you, you added um what is it? In into Careless the garden. Whisper. In the garden. <laughs> in the garden. Careless whisper. <laughs> How about Lord I lift your name on <laughs> <laughs> I think we should probably end the podcast now before we do any more damage. Wait, I'm not done yet. Okay. All right. Sorry. I Go also ahead. wanted to say. You're an excellent hiker. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to take well, a moment of I'm personal privilege <laughs> to talk driver. about my skill <laughs> at hiking. <laughs> okay. Which is quite considerable, mm. actually. Mm. Okay. Um, I wanted to say one of the things that made me most hopeful about the conference was to get to know some of the young leaders in the denomination. Amen to that. That, that. There are people, you know, like like Keith and Jeff and others who, and Carolyn Moore, who have really carried a lot of weight for a long time. But unless we're identifying people in younger generations who um, <clears throat> can take the baton and go forward and also empowering them to do that work, then we're doing the denomination a disservice. And what I thought was really cool was seeing some of these people take leadership and, and use their gifts. And like my, my committee, which was the Episcopacy Committee, that was the committee where there was probably the most disagreement going in. And a young, younger pastor, Jordan McFall, chaired that. He did a great job, you know, of some, in some really challenging circumstances, I thought, mm -hmm. um, was very cool, was very even-handed. Um, there was another guy in my committee named Jason Burnham who was just like a plow horse with this yeah. legislation, and he knew it. He was so prepared coming in, and he helped us so much. And he also he also has Scott Kisker hair. It's so, true. It's really yeah. good hair, yeah. Yeah. But they both did a really good job. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. Really good. Why, why is why is that a but? <laughs> As if one can't be competent and have good hair. You, I mean, I just yes. You're gifted. Well, you're gifted with competency and good hair. Yeah. Okay. And so That's Jason what I'm Burnham. saying. Like, why but? I didn't mean it. I, apolo I apologize. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll get over it. You know, Tesha's leadership at the conference, and and wow, there were so. other people there who just they they were just willing to step in and and fill a gap you know and i was really encouraged to see that yeah the gifts of the spirit were well on display and and i don't just mean like manifestations of the spirit i mean there it was a room full of ministry leaders and you felt that this is a very this is a place full of people who are equipped and ready to have conversations to it was very relational it was very um it was the body of christ yeah so yes it was yeah. amazing yeah it was good so thank you god for a great conference and a great beginning to this new denomination amen to that amen to that well any final parting thoughts words for this episode you know, submit your um, request to Tesha for the mashup of mm -hmm. No God Like Jehovah. Like we should Days do that. And then submit yourself to God and resist the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till the next podcast. You don't even know what I can do. Let's do it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I think, friends, that has been the episode Something. for today. <laughs> Yeah. I just want to say, this has been a pretty joyful episode, and I'm realizing that maybe the stress of how all of this has happened may have affected previous episodes. Maybe maybe we're going to take a turn here. Maybe, maybe it's going to be happier from now on. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's been our episode for today, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to follow us on social media and rate and like the podcast because it helps people find us. And now that we're going to be happier, 
you should definitely share. Subscribe and share. Um, we'll come back to you in the next conversation. Bye. 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 Bye.